All the best, Vic. I guess that's it. Bye. Hello everyone, uh, hope you are all having a great uh, morning and weekend. So thanks for joining in and I am Vivek Raja, the organizer of uh, Azure Developer Communities in Chennai, Coimbatore and Madurai. And we also have Navneetan who is uh, organizing other communities in uh, Tamil Nadu as well. So we are very privileged and honored to have Vivek Sridhar uh, from Microsoft who will be delivering a talk today on deploying a Spring Boot application. I guess like he doesn't deserve a very big intro because you're very much popular in developer communities ecosystems. And uh, thanks for joining in today's morning. And the stage is yours. Right now. You can hear me, right? Yep. Let me share my screen. Uh, still, uh, still, yep, yep. Now you can see that, right? Yep, perfect. Okay, uh, so we are going to continue the uh, journey with respect to Java and Azure. And today's session is more focused on um, Spring Boot applications. And, uh, you know, before I deep dive into the discussion, you know, I just want to uh, introduce myself for people who don't know me, Vivek. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, I'm Vivek, and um, you know, I, I know, I pretty much uh, did nine years of uh, software development at IBM, and did uh, DevOps uh, for HCL and Blackbird. Startup founder, worked as a senior developer advocate uh, at DigitalOcean, and uh, currently developer advocate at Microsoft as well, uh, starting that new role from Monday. Uh, so if you if you need more information on the uh, calendar, if you need uh, tutorials, code, and you know anything else, you know you can go to my website, and uh, obviously you can uh, deep dive into that, and you will find all the links to you know read and stuff like that. So uh, I'll not spend much time on slides. So I'm done with the slide stuff. Uh, we will go directly into the discussion. So this is not the first session which we are doing. Uh, you know, we did uh, a session uh, on 17th as well, or very specific to um, app surveys, container instance, uh, building a Java application there. Um, on 24th, we focused on Azure Kubernetes service. So how, how to build a Kubernetes service and uh, you know uh, deploy uh, in, onto the Kubernetes service from an app, uh, Spring Boot app perspective. Uh, but today is more focused on Azure Spring Cloud, but I will also cover a couple of things which we did um, on 17th and 24th so that uh, this specific session uh, will have almost everything which we did in in last two weeks uh, so for more information and for recordings and other things you know you can go and visit the uh, github repo which is there uh, just go to the github repo and you will find all the information there uh, let's start with uh, you know app service uh, we did this specific thing and I'm, I'm not going to deep dive into each of these things because we have already done it in previous uh, session, but I just want to show you how exactly this work. So this is the steps to do it. And I'm just putting out the steps here so that you know you can also view it. And um, you know it's very pretty straightforward. And how to design it uh, is already there in this GitHub repo. And if you go to this GitHub repo, you will find the code and you will find the POM files. You will find the uh, right set of uh, information for you to build this uh, you know, application. So this, you know, we'll just uh, you know go back and uh, drive this at B app service, and we will you know, remove this. Okay. Anyways, it's already there. So all we okay, we'll remove this off so that it's not from first. We'll start from first. Uh, 
All right? So uh, let's go there and do the git clone. And when I do the git clone, I get the code. I have the code here. So it's already there. So there is nothing new which we are doing. But we this code has uh, everything related to uh, the uh, execution. So if you see the POM file, POM file is already here. And in within the POM file, there is already all the required information is already set. So if you want to see that POM file, we will just open it and see that. Code, we go to Java, App Service, and there is complete this POM file. Okay, so this POM file, most of the things are set already, right? So the uh, group ID, artifact IDs, uh, all the required starters and other things and uh, important stuff which is there. Now what we do, what we will do is we'll set uh, the specific things uh, from a, from from Microsoft perspective, from Azure App Service, what we need to be doing, right? So let me go and configure the Maven. To while it is building, we want to configure a couple of things. Uh, so we will go and configure it. So it's there is already a plugin, Azure Web App uh, Maven plugin, and you just use this Maven plugin. Um, it will get started and it will configure for us and it will definitely ask us a couple of information and you provide those information and you will be able to uh, set this uh, set this up and um, and then we will deploy the package and see how it how it gets deployed so it's very simple so if you see this it is asking me uh, do you want to configure it for windows or linux or docker i'll say okay linux and we want to, which Java version I want to use. I'm using Java 8. And which machine I want to use. Uh, I'm using B2, so I'll say 2. And it is giving me all the rest of the information which is required for me to uh, execute this uh, on the app service. So this is a simple Java uh, application and simple Spring Boot app, uh, which has the required information available. And we are building it through. Um, the plugin which is there and once you have used the plugin uh, we can just go back and execute it and we're just going to go and deploy so i'm not sure whether it is already deployed let me check no it's not deployed right so there are a couple of things which I've already deployed for the test purpose. So I'm going to deploy it and I'm going to use the same thing and we can package it uh, Azure Web App and deploy the package was already ready and it will go and deploy that package. It picks the package and deploys it. Um, it will just deploy and give me a URL and we can just go back and use that URL. To see what it does right so um i haven't done any change in the code but last time when we did we did change code and all those activities we did in terms of uh, adding new code to it and uh, tested it for for more information on that and other things there is video already available so you can go and access it through the youtube channel of azure dev community and you can use it while this is building we'll wait for it to run through just to give it a bit. So what it does is it creates a new app service plan. It creates a new app service. It creates everything and then deploys it. So it's pretty much, uh, pretty, you know, um, simple uh, to get started because you're not going and creating anything new at all. And it's all through the just through command. Uh, you are provided all the information and executing it. When you do it this for the second time, right? Uh, you know, once you have deployed it already, you are, if you're doing it for the second time, uh, 
it requires only few information that is if you are changing some kind of configurations only uh, it will ask for whether you want to change uh, the configuration to from uh, infrastructure wise from um, os wise and other things um, that's it so rest of the things remains the same and it keeps uh, using the same thing whichever your information you are provided as of now okay so let us wait for it to get created We'll say type and see what all type app service plan is got created now. And we have app service. And app service, right? So you can see there is app service and app service plan uh been created and it's pretty fast as well so just give it a bit it is deploying the artifact once it deploys it gives you the link to access it as well okay so let's wait for it to complete So while you know it, it, it does take some time, so yes, it has completed. So this is the link, and we will go back here and see that so it's up. So it's giving me a message. This was a simple message, we didn't edit it, and we are just using it. So this is the Spring Boot link, uh, which which got created here. So this is how you can easily deploy uh, a Spring Boot app onto the Azure App Service. Um, we can change code, we can see what it is and other things, but that is again, it is out of scope of this particular uh, discussion, but we have done that discussion before. So I'm, I'm just going, going back and um, thinking from how do we get started with the container, build it from scratch and see uh, how to build an API uh, on the Spring Boot app and use that API uh, and to deploy it onto the Kubernetes. And then uh, we will also see how we can deploy a simple uh, app onto the Spring Cloud. I've also deployed um, a microservice app uh, onto the Spring Cloud, just to show you how exactly it works, how the mapping works, and how you can see the mappings, uh, etc. I'll, I'll, I'll share all the uh, commands. I'll share all the you know required information in my GitHub repo, anyways. Uh, but also um, do follow these steps if you are doing it along, right? So uh, just go to this Spring Boot. Uh, this is an initializer. We have seen this before. Uh, this is a simple way to do it. Maven, you select the project, which language, snapshot, provide the details, whichever details you want to provide. Um, say artifact name as uh, VS demo we did last time. Spring Boot app uh, project for uh, Azure. We can do that way and choose the right set of things and also add dependencies. You can choose whichever dependencies you want and you can take those dependencies and execute it. So this is a simple uh, way to drive these things. Um, so when you do the generate, uh, you will get uh, the code, okay? So when you click on the generate button, uh, you will get a zip package of the code. And that exactly the zip package I have Here, okay, where am I? Okay. So I've just copied the zip package into my location and I've unzipped it, that is VS demo. And this is, this is what uh, I have it as a code uh, from them. And then there is um, Docker, uh, Docker file, which I have created on top of this. So if you just see the Docker file, it's a simple Docker file uh, to just to copy the jar, jar into the one location and run the jar, Java jar, right? Java command. 
and this is the simple app uh, spring app right and i just i have just dockerized it and once i have dockerized it what i have done is i have created an image so we can also do that image now uh, so basically images and go for docker build we can call it version 3 and build it so if once uh, we have built this uh, it's pretty fast uh, we'll go to the extension docker extensions on my visual studio code and we can see that there is version 3 is there already and all we need to do is to push this to my container registry i have the container registry on azure so i have already created that so it's a private registry so just go to our, you know, the wikibytes uh, and then enter and it will start deploying the app onto the version 3. Um, while it does, I have Kubernetes um, cluster as well ready. Just give it a bit to deploy this a particular image onto the container registry. When it does, um, let's go back to the Azure. We will close this off. So I already have a Kubernetes cluster. So I don't want to spend time in creating a cluster, uh, but it is very simple to create. Just go to create uh, resources and go to containers click on community service and provide the resource group details give it a name any name and you know choose the size the number of nodes you need and uh, rest of the informations which are required from authentication you know, or the other node pools um, virtual node authentication methodologies, uh, which is required from uh, accessing it and networking. Uh, at the time of networking, there are a couple of things which is there, which is HTTP routing, which is the, uh, you're using um, the you know, load balancer of Azure and then integrations uh, using the container registry. So already created container registry and it's easier to use uh, within the Azure because you, you have the connectability, right? So that is a simple way to set it up. Um, and then there is tags and then just go and review and create, right? So it's very easy to do that. So I it, and it takes some time, bit of time to do that. So I've already created uh, a simple Kubernetes cluster. So it's already there with two nodes. Um, let's go back to my this thing okay now it has you know uh, uh, pushed the uh, image to the container uh, registry right so now what we will do is uh, we'll take a look at the uh, one of the you know yaml file to deploy it on kubernetes so let me go back to this kubernetes cluster which i have i'll go to namespaces and in namespace i have um I have a bunch of namespaces already set it up here and I have a bunch of services which is already there and I'm running a couple of services right and I'm just going there to the namespace and create a new one and while I create a new one let me give it a new name so it's be you know uh, to understand this YAML and other things you need to uh, understand the complete uh, Kubernetes uh, application development. So that's not what I'm focusing on. I want to make sure I do a deployment, and on, through this deployment, I have a 
uh, load balancer, which is the services enabled on top of the app, which we are going to do the deployment and then access it uh, through the uh, load balancer, which is added to it, right? So there is a public facing IP, which is added to it. So we will give it a name. So we will give um, Spring on Azure and we are going to use the same name here as well app name as well so this is a namespace we are creating with this this app to be run in that namespace and this is the label and label name of the app and the container also will be named the same but the container detail is different so we did create version 3 so we're going to you know give version 3 and then probably the same names here as well um and the app selector as well, we need to provide the same name and the port on which it has to run. So this is a simple uh, way to do it, YAML, YAMLing it, and that's it. So we are done. So the service and deployment gets created and you can you know go and access the code, which is on the service ingress. Uh, and you can see this on Spring Spring on Azure, right? So what we did was uh, we just took initializer the code and we did edit the code. It was done and we added this message. Uh, previously we have done this and then uh, updated a couple of things and there was Docker file and we created that you know that image. We pushed it onto the uh, onto the uh, container container registry. And through that container registry, uh, we are creating the uh, Kubernetes namespace um, and deploying the app, deploying the pod here. And this is the pod which gets deployed, right? This is the version uh, three, uh, which we have done. And this is the IP address on which it is there. You will just copy and slash message. It takes some time to run, but uh, because of the container, first time we are running it. Uh, but this is the message is what we're going to get. I already have one more namespace which is running the same thing with this this G you know GS Spring Boot Docker, which is uh, similar to what we have done now, right? So while that comes up, we'll not wait for it to come up late. Just give it a minute. Um, so we'll go back and uh, focus on uh, Spring Boot because a bunch of things we need to do in the Spring Boot, right? So why Spring Boot? Spring Boot is uh, it's a microservice application development. So when you're building um, you know, a microservice application, uh, you know that um, you have a lot of services to manage and execute it, and you need to make sure that uh, um, you know, you need to make sure talking to each other, and there is a way to for you to trace things, uh, do rest of the activities from log management, um, and also scale up the infrastructure, scale down the infrastructures uh, whenever it is required. So, Azure Spring Cloud, uh, specifically Spring Cloud, provides you that interface uh, on how to solve these kind of problems. Right. So, I don't know why this is again failing. But that's fine. This is the message we need to get. And this is the message which will come here. Um, so let's go back and see what needs to be done in the Spring Cloud. So similar stuff. Uh, we build a package and go to Spring Cloud. We have the same code which was there. We have the package ready. And all we need to do is uh, you know, build a code and uh, execute it. So we will just do this, you know, just skip it and we'll execute it. And then we will see an extension uh, 
there is an extension which is there available for uh, Azure Spring Cloud, and we will create that. And then we will create a Spring Cloud on Azure portal, and then we will register um, a simple uh, app on the Spring Cloud uh, so that we can take a look at it. And we will also go in depth uh, into building uh, one of the uh, famous example which is already uh, designed by Azure samples itself so we'll see that a uh, couple of things what we can do from that perspective right so let me uh, go back here and go to create resource and type in Azure Spring Cloud right so when I click on Azure Spring Cloud you can create a new Azure Spring Cloud. It's, you know, simple step. Um, just go and do a Java on Azure. Give it a name, anything, and you can choose the whatever you know, uh, basic or standard you know pricing model. And then there is logs and application inside. This is the most important part of. Um, uh, Azure Spring Cloud because this is where you track everything about our, you know from microservice architecture perspective. Uh, I'll show you how it is done. And networking is one more thing which uh, you can either deploy it on your own network or or on different. And then you do use the tag and review and create it. So I've already done that. You know, app has been created. It's already here. Um, I already have an app, and I have a couple of apps also running. OK, so we will see how to uh, do that uh, from an execution perspective. Let's go here and package it. Right. So this is a simple uh, Spring Boot Cloud, uh, Spring Boot app, which I downloaded from the Spring Initializer. OK, so there is nothing different. This is this is where you start as well. If you want to get started with a plain Spring application, you just come here to this uh, initializer and download the package. OK, so simple. Uh, this is already added. The, it's an extension for your CLI. So we will go and it's already there. It's there for me. And we'll create a endpoint. So this is an endpoint. So this is where the traffic will go in uh, for a specific app. Okay. So uh, this is where you can access it. It will just create a one single endpoint. So we'll create an app by name, um, say, Hello World, right? And this is the uh, this is my service name, which is Rukibyte, and then this is my uh, resource group name, which is uh, Java on Azure, and I'm assigning an endpoint and making it true. Okay, so when I do that, it will create an app with Hello World, and it will provide me all the rest of the information. So if you go here, you can see these apps here. If I refresh, there will be one more which is coming in. And it has instances registered and other things which is required. You can also add a couple of things that we will see. So it is creating the deployment and setting it up. So Spring Cloud is a cluster. On that cluster, you are creating a simple app and that app uh, in that app you are telling this is where the end you know uh, endpoint is for this specific uh, app name uh, i can deploy any number of uh, services under this app and create one end one endpoint and then rest of the things can be service discoverable that is where uh, the azure spring cloud is so strong uh, and keeping in mind that while building microservices, all these things are such a, a huge 
uh, you know, painful when when it comes to building that kind of an operations, right? Um, so it's 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 very difficult to uh, do the service discovery, building the tracing and other things uh, while doing microservices. So this this specific uh, Spring Cloud is where um, is where uh, you know these kind of problems are really uh, taken care. Okay, so let us just wait for two minutes while this operation gets completed. Done. So if you see this, this is the endpoint. So I can just copy this and go back here to my so this is a plane this doesn't have any kind of uh, package uploaded yet right so we need to go here and upload the package so we just created the endpoint but we need to upload the package so the package is what we built uh, just previously in this maybe in clean package uh, so we just need to make sure we do that and upload it and the same thing which i'm using not the change we need to make is the name of the app that is not hello spring hello world right so we'll just say hello world and rest of the things are already being given and just type so you will see that the package is getting up uploaded there right so once the package gets uploaded once we refresh the page we will see the code change Okay. Just give it a minute. While this is happening, you know, there is a lot of things to be covered here. Um, I'll not be running all the commands and executing it for you because it takes some time to build packages, run it, and see what it is. Um, I've already created this for, for our understanding, and I'll just show you how to uh, drive this uh, kind of an execution now just after uh, uploading this right so is here also same process what we are following we have a code base we create the package uh, and then we configure it so this was not done last time if you see here we didn't configure uh, the you know uh, the service name and the uh, resource group name uh, here is where we are uh, configuring it. There is a you know there is a command called az configure. I'm just configuring the service name and the uh, Spring Cloud service name and the resource group name. And once I'm configured, whatever command I type, it is specifically for this configuration. So so you know I create an endpoint called API Gateway. I provide what should be the instance count and memory assigned to it. And for the same thing, I add customer service. Uh, which is one of the service uh, which is there in the Spring Cloud. There are two services. There are many services, in fact, uh, that you can take a look at it in this code base. Uh, I'm just doing it for only for two. And then there is, uh, uh, again, very simple. Once you have registered the app uh, and you know created the endpoint, you are add, you know, registering another app through this command, which is Spring Cloud app create. Both of them are the same commands. Uh, and then you are what you are doing is uh, you are doing the uh, once you are uh, registered the app we need to deploy the code right that is where we have generated the jar file uh, which gets generated through this code which is there and that is what we are doing as of now as well so this is deployed uh, this is how it will look right so once it is uh, deployed slash message it will look like this, right? So this is the code which we uh, deployed. So it's very simple. And let me go back to my OneNote. So 
you create a package uh, it's there in your target and you add uh, register the app you create a service under the app and uh, you just uh, deploy the code uh, to the respective apps and it is up and running that's it so it's that's that's uh, you know that's the easiest way to uh, drive your microservice applications right so simple and it is up there now um, so both uh, if you see here uh, the new one the new hello world is here and the old one which is api gateway and customer service which i deployed is available for you to use right so this is uh, just the deployment part of it when when you start using this uh, application and there is a lot of traffic to this application then there is a lot of things which happens right so if you go to the application insights this is the most important thing when you go into my application insight um, you can see Azure application mapping. Okay, there are various things, but I am just focusing on a couple of things, which is mapping. So if you can see these services, uh, which is there, right? These are the services. Uh, let me close this off and go to mapping again. By the way, this is the dashboard for the insight for the services which we have deployed. So you can see there are three services, there are you know one users, so many things which is information uh, to manage your applications. And this is what the instance and what is wrong with the instance, how much time it is taking, execution and other things. You can take a look at it. So this grows broad actually you can design it in different ways and this is one instance which we built that is the hello spring and hello world is an instance of this right so we have just created a uh, same instance here and then this is a different um you know different ones which we had built api gateway and customer service and you can see it is already showing there is some issue in terms of uh, connectability there's its usage is something and you can already see there is a problem with uh you know 13 uh, percent of the instance has been taken taken you know uh, it's been used uh so that is you know that is there is the uh, important part of using this uh tool right this, this service where you can see all the microservices how it is interacting with each other and where the problem is and how we can go back there and fix it. So there are a bunch of things, live metrics uh, you can see, and there is smart detection, and then there is uh, you know uh, scaling up as well is one of the thing which you can do. Um, you can see smart detection. This is for eleven last seven days. Transactions which is happening. See all transactions in last twenty four hours. So you can also see the transactions which is happening in last twenty four hours. You can see the dependencies, trays. Everything is here. So you know uh, you can read the report and make sure wherever there is an issue, you can go back and uh, fix those issues. Green is obviously good. Um, but here there is some issue and there are some failures and other things. Um, and also, so when I go into diagnose and solve problems, right, uh, which is here, right, this, you click on this button, it, it is very interesting, right? So if you see here, um, it has all the information and you can say, God, where is my data? Where is my data? And other things. Everything is available here. Smart detection. No, this is not the one. The availability. Yeah. Cool. So you can also see the availability uh, related to this specific, uh, you know, services. Um, in fact, you can, you know, uh, you know check the performance so if you see this is a section for investigation and that is what it is right it is basically solving you um, the problem from a investigation perspective uh, so when you have built a microservice application you need to make sure that 
um, all these uh, things are taken care right well, one is distributed tracing uh, the of how these applications are interacting with each other where is the performance issue with respect to different services so that is where the mapping is actually helping me to figure out in which of the service there is an issue and how many uh, instances i can improvise and other things right so let me go back and show you uh, the apps as well oh this is i'm in inside sorry let me go to the all resources and go to the spring cloud okay now even if i go to spring cloud and do this uh, diagnose right um, you can get all the reports in a, in a very different way in fact um, you can just say config uh, you see that you know any of these report can be we can obtain and if you go to you know app discovery okay and it shares me a report so it is showing me the report uh, it is building that report and sharing me the details i just opened it before a bit there is something wrong ha huh. so it is just showing me uh, some apps are not healthy because there was some issue with memory and it was just showing me one of the app was red which was the red uh, i could easily find out from app insight right so that was one and then if you go to apps there is list of apps which we built it and if you go to say hello world app you can also scale it up scale it down a uh, couple of things which you can do on the app as well so uh, this is scale out is available for you scale up is available for you this is specific to that specific app okay so i can just go here and scale it up to you know with cpu uh, as well and just save it right so just save this to and save it and it, it just, i just scale it up i can scale it down and i can do couple of uh, you know customizations and other things but that is part of the managing the whole thing so this is pretty much everything uh, and i just wanted to show you uh, the azure spring cloud from a usability perspective um, uh, how you can use it for microservices and this is the most important aspect of it right how these uh, mapping actually shows you stuff and how you can uh make sure that you can see what is happening and how this is instance are behaving and the stuff so which is good and uh any questions uh you have please uh share it with me any questions uh vivek yeah uh, hi vivek uh, so uh, uh, we don't have any questions here so but uh, we can talk about your uh, the wiki bytes hack and uh, do tell us uh, what all we can benefit out of it oh sure um let me show you this mm let me share my screen just give me a minute you can see my screen uh not it a uh, one second yeah i yes. think you are cool so um from a wikipedia you know the uh, github repo perspective i generally share uh, all the activities which i'm doing and from the talks to the content which i'm delivering so as of now uh, you know i've launched i've just completed one of the series uh, for github action series i pretty much done everything related to github actions uh, from deploying to uh, azure web app kubernetes streamlining databases ml um, container scanning and everything 
and and also i have shared couple of hacks and i'm going to add more hacks into this uh, it's just that uh, i haven't added because this just got completed in last week so once it is done i will be able to do it but i have also launched one of the uh, skilling challenge where uh, you can go back and read it on your own and it's available as part of the skilling so you can just log in here and just uh, join and you will be able to find um some seven hours of learning of github actions uh, if you're using github actions anywhere if you're not using as well you know it's kind of good to learn it's something which is uh, you will use in future uh, if if not today right so this is something which is uh, good about uh, you know uh, github so let us uh, that's one thing which i we can talk about the other thing is obviously we will uh, talk about the hacks and other things in coming weeks uh, how to solve those hacks and other thing in in next one or two weeks we will we will set it up as a session for that awesome that's great uh, so navneet uh, do you want to join join it uh, no way all right uh, so uh, i guess we can conclude as uh, the session as of now uh, so uh, thanks everyone for joining in and it was a great amazing sessions so all this uh, recordings will be available in youtube and please do check out the description which has all the relevant details of the speaker and uh, the github repos and everything and uh, do check out our uh, meetup page where we uh, constantly post all the relevant resources and the uh, links and the materials for you to check back in uh, so thanks for joining in and it was a great session uh, thank you vex sir for your time and efforts and uh, we will join back in another amazing session uh, very soon uh, keep an eye on our meetup page and uh, do uh, rsvp for uh, future sessions as well so uh, thank you uh, ramneet and thank you vex thank you bye 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 thank you thank you